yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The U.S. plunges headfirst into World War II. Realizing it had several fronts on foreign soil, the Allied commanders looked at ways to move large amounts of men and machines in a short amount of time. The military found Andrew Jackson Higgins and his marsh boats. On D-Day, between 800 and 1100 Higgins landing craft were used to storm the beaches at Normandy. The weather yesterday, which was original date selected, was impossible all along the target coast. If any blame or fault best attaches improved. to the attempt, it is mine alone, Dwight David Eisenhower. June 6, 1944, D-Day Normandy, Utah Beach, the USS Bayfield, Coast Guard Man Assault Troop Transport. A lot of things took place that day for me as a kid, 18 and a half years of age. <laughs> credited by many to have won the war. This story is dedicated to the Higgins design, the generous gift from Rick Kogler, with thoughts along the way. You ready? Our trip started at 5 a.m. at the Military Museum. I slept most of the three-hour drive to Blood River. Good trip. Good trip? Yeah. We done yet? Not quite. We got about two more. <laughs> CJ sprang for breakfast. Well, at least donuts. After riding in the car for over three hours, we finally made it to boat. I was told the story of Marvin Ferret and how he used to keep up the boat for Mr. Kogler. As a matter of fact, I have a friend of mine that, uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that owns one of these landing craft right now as we speak. And he keeps it right here in the river, uh, in um, the Blood River in Springfield, Louisiana. And he's up in Baton Rouge, I'm down in New Orleans, and he's, I'm retired, but I got more time here. So he always wants me to go down and run the thing just to keep the injury. So one of these days, if y'all want to go take a ride, give me a call and I'll take y'all for a ride. I even hit the beach. This is Remy. You have to ask Mr. Kogler why his feet can't touch the ground at the dock. I was very impressed with the overall condition of the boat. What had just taken us three hours by car would now take us two days by boat through the waterways where the Higgins designs became reality. CJ looked like a kid on Christmas morning with a gigantic smile on his face. This is Mr. Kogler, and of course Remy. As our trip continued on, I was enjoying the sights and sounds of the bayous, just as I did as a young kid with my grandfather in South Louisiana. As we continued on, my mind drifted to Mr. Marvin Perrette and his stories. A mock-up, if you please. And what we'd do, we'd pull up to this thing, and the Marines would march down from the base, and they'd go up on top, and we'd come in here, and the water's like glass. I never saw that sight again once I left this place. <laughs> and um, so anyway, these Marines, they'd come down at debarkation at the end of the boat, and uh, then we'd take them out into... Before we left, we topped off with 100 gallons of diesel. I'm sure glad I wasn't paying the bill. As we left the dock, the sounds of Simpa Pradas played in my head. Mr. Kogler, Ralph, and Remy had to disembark, and we continued on our journey. 
As we entered the lake, my thoughts went back to Mr. Perrette and his stories of Andrew Higgins. Navy battle station, lower all boats, away all boats. I said, I saw Mr. Higgins' uh, operation with his landing craft hitting the beach out there, below Pontchartrain Beach in that area out there. And a lot of kids, uh, unlike um, maybe today, these kids go out and get a, a, a phony uh, driver's license or ID so they can buy a can of beer or a pack of cigarettes. These guys were doing this at age 15 just to get in the service. This made me think of my own son, just a couple of years away from 15. I couldn't imagine him getting ready to face what the guys in boats like this faced, not knowing what their fate would be. And while we had it pretty easy coming back across the lake, I thought of the guys packed in like sardines. Six troops in here, and you look at that little area, and you feel, well, that's big green, and they can relax, plug, but it wasn't that at all. You gotta understand, every one of these soldiers had a backpack on with about 90 pounds of gear, everything they own on their person. Consequently, every one of these men are standing in two spots, not one. Consequently, they're in there frozen in space and time. They're packed in like sardines. They can't even move. They can't even sit down in their own spot. Many of the soldiers that won boats like this were killed getting off the boat. I was thinking of Private Ryan when the front door dropped. However, more soldiers died from bomb holes when they stepped off the boat with the heavy packs and went into holes 8 to 10 feet deep filled with water. Our major concern just the navigation of the waterways. As we made it through the lake, I thought of our history. American citizens of all ages who have fought for freedom against tyranny. This landing craft and thousands like it designed and manufactured by Andrew Higgins have helped our soldiers and our military become the best military in history of the world and remain in that status for over 60 years. As we made our trek from Blood River to Homa, I realized how symbolic our trip was. As our goal, the regional military museums takes history and tries to make it come to life. For those that visit this landing craft, this will be an integral part of this mission. Mr. Kogler understood this mission and through his generosity gave us the landing craft to help us achieve this goal. On our trip we had Americans from four generations. Those who had served, those who had not, and those too young to have made that decision yet. But after our journey was complete we could all better understand how a soldier must have felt riding on this ship. How Marvin Perrette must have felt when he captained an LCBP at Normandy. Marseille. And Iwo Jima. How many of thousands of troops that sacrificed their lives for our freedom must have felt when a ship just like this cut through the water to its destination knowing that there was only danger ahead. We thank all those brave men and women who have served in our military. And Marvin Perrette, we wish you Godspeed. I want to take them over there. They shot pictures of me driving the thing and it showed up on a program called Secrets of the Dead. It was the name of the program and it showed up. Some of y'all may have even seen it. It was a handsome looking guy. You, you couldn't have missed him. And um, anyway, what happened?